Greetings, fellow classic TV fans, and welcome to Retro TV Trivia. I'm your host, Pat McCormack. On today's podcast, we have a real treat. We're being joined by none other than Jerry Mathers, a.k.a. Theodore Cleaver from Leave it to Beaver. Jerry is once again out on the fan event and autograph show circuit. We talk about his recent personal appearances and the reunion with his former Leave it to Beaver co-stars in honor of the late, great Tony Dow. We also discuss his dear friend and how he will always be appreciated, missed, and forever remembered as everyone's classic TV brother. On a brighter note, there's some great merchandise available on Jerry's website, which we point out make for some great holiday gifts. I'll include the link to the Jerry Mathers Beaver Merch website in the description. Meanwhile, enjoy my conversation with a true trailblazer of classic television. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the podcast, the legendary Jerry Mathers. How you doing? I'm doing pretty good, thanks. Yourself? Well, Pat, I'm doing just absolutely great. It's sure nice to hear from you. Oh, thanks, buddy. Well, I know a lot of the fans are finding it nice to hear from you, too. And I know you just got back from a, a big event out in Tennessee, right? Absolutely. It was the Gallatin um comic-con and so it's people from all over that area it was really fun you know because when being as big as the united states is when people want to see me you know they write me letters and i got a a lot of people that you know write things to me but they want to meet you in person and so when we have something like that where people can come from all over several different states they were there from and it's just really nice and they're really happy and yeah i love meeting my fans yeah no, that that I know. Um, you know, we ran into each other at the Hollywood show a, a few weeks back. Right. Um, and of course, California, I think, slowly limps back into the fan event thing. <laughs> Probably a lot slower than, you know, the heartland. Um, is that your experience that you usually have a much greater turnout, you know, in places like Tennessee or? Well, yeah, but there's a reason for that, because. Um, California, especially Los Angeles, has so many events that they have people that they, you know, would like to see where when you go to the Mid-Atlantic or, you know, Middle America, they don't have that. If there was one celebrity there, maybe for a show, that's one thing. But we can have here in Los Angeles several. So it's always fun to go there because they are real. They feel you're really special because they don't really get the same thing we have here in Los Angeles. Sure. Sure. And so Jerry, I understand that this event, you brought some friends specifically Rich Carell was there with you, your best buddy. Absolutely. He's a really nice guy and he had a great time. Yeah. I guess that I ran into him at the Hollywood show too. Actually, I think you guys introduced me in a nonchalant kind of way, which was just go to Rich. He will talk to you. (laughs) (laughs) What could be easier? Exactly. Well, he's upcoming. He's going to be an upcoming podcast guest, and I cannot wait for that. Oh, he's very, you'll be very, uh, he'll have a lot to say because he's done a lot of things. And uh, do you know who his dad was? Amos and Andy, right? Right. So he, he, uh, it was funny when I was growing up, he lived in a huge mansion in Beverly Hills with maids and butlers. And I lived out in the valley with my family. And, you know, you get out of bed and the, the maid would come in and make your bed for you and ask you what you wanted for breakfast. At my house, he got out of bed and they said, you missed breakfast. Better luck tomorrow. You forgot to slop the hogs. Yep. <laughs> oh, wow. Well, you know what? He certainly doesn't come off as a... Um, no, that's that's what I've always liked about him. And the interesting part was how he actually kind of got on the show was that his um, the people that wrote Leave it to Beaver had written for uh, Amos and Andy, oh. which was what which he did. So um, and so they, you know, they they were very good friends. And so that's how he kind of not worked his way in. But he hadn't done a lot of work before Leave it to Beaver. Yeah. Well, and you guys have remained lifelong friends, which is awesome. Oh, yeah. Wasn't he even your best man, or was it vice versa? Yes, he was. Yeah. Oh, wonderful. Well, I can't wait to talk to him. We've known each other for about, let's see, 62 years. Just awesome. You know, 
you guys, uh, the, the funny thing is, in talking to you, <laughs> it's like, so you recently turned 35, you say. Wow, because that's what it sounds like. <laughs> I thought it was 25, but okay. <laughs> Forgive me for adding that extra decade there, Jerry. I don't think you deserve it. Oh, Thank you. <laughs> Speaking of, of uh, co-stars, Veronica Cartwright, she was there? Yes, and she's, I've known her. She played on... Um, leave it to be she wasn't uh, uh, you know a principal that was there but i think she did four or five episodes with different things but don't quote me on that because i'm not really sure how many she did well all i got is that she gave you your first french kiss on tv well that's true but i don't usually go around kissing french people <laughs> Le Bivere. he gives me deep passionate kisses oh boy well i think it's interesting that you both had another, have another thing in common. And you probably know where I'm going with this. As child actors, of course, you were on Leave it to Beaver. Yes. But, but you were also directed by one of the all-time greats, Mr. Hitchcock. Oh, yes. And that was actually before Leave it to Beaver. Right. So I did The Trip with Harry, which was uh, you know a really fun time because we went to Stowe, Vermont, and... Uh, John Forsythe, Eva Marie Saint, and all these people were there. Um, Shirley MacLaine. Um, it was actually her very first movie. So right. it was really fun. And, you know, it was something that I honestly at that time wasn't really um, – it, it's not like I could do it today because today I know exactly what you do. And, you know, this, this goes here, this goes there. But at that time, and they said, okay, now we're leaving in three days. Pack up your stuff, you know. And I was six years old. And my mom went with me, so I mean, it wasn't like I was by myself, but uh, it was a lot of fun. Oh, I'll bet. Well, it looked like you were having fun. It really did. But you were <laughs> quite young. I mean, obviously, pre-Leave it to Beaver. Whereas Veronica, her big uh, experience was The Birds, of course. Uh, still considered a child actress, I would say. But did you, uh, do you guys ever... <laughs> Talk about your combined experiences or compare notes to what it was like to work with the great. Uh, I hate to bust your little bubble, but no, ah. <laughs> you know, it's, it's nothing I even, I don't know if she does, but I never even think about it. You know, like those, I did so many shows and live TV and, you know, movies and all sorts of things that I can't even remember half the things people say, Oh, I saw you on this. I went, Oh, was I on that? <laughs> yes, Batman. You remember Batman, right? <laughs> yeah, Batman I remember. That was a little bit different, but a lot of the things I did at Paramount, I, I worked a whole lot at Paramount. You know, they were they were movies. They weren't on TV. They were movies. So they were fun, but, they, you know, you'd, you'd work for like, you know, six, eight, 10, 15 weeks sometimes. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Well, and again, um, I did notice with this past event that Lauren Dow was with you. Yes, you know, we wanted her not to feel that we were just going to basically, you know, sh shove her out because whatever, you know, we didn't want her to, to right. feel that she wouldn't be, you know, a part of this, a part of us, even though, we, you know, the things that happen, happen. Yeah, of course. Well, we haven't really spoke much since, and I don't really want to dwell there, but I understand that it was a very positive experience for her, according to your lovely wife, Teresa. That's beautiful, you know? That, that she can get that outpouring. And, you know, I'm sure it's not not the easiest thing for you to be traveling again without your uh, brother from another mother. But, uh, you know, it's, it's just kind of an odd experience because, you know, usually he'd be there and we'd go out to dinner and breakfast before the shows and stuff. But, uh, you know, he had a great life. He was a wonderful person. And, you know, I, I wish he was still here. But we'll always be able to remember him through all the things he did, Leave it to Beaver and many other shows. And, you know, he's just a really nice guy. Sure. And multi-talented. Absolutely. He's a, a, a great gymnast. In fact, that when he started Leave it to Beaver, he was actually training for the Olympics. Wow. Uh, as a diver. He was a AAU swimming and diving champ and also a diver. So um, he luckily for us picked us instead of going on to, um, you know, be in the Olympics and, uh, and be a swimming and diving person. Yeah. Yeah. I think it was a better choice. I do. I'm glad he did. <laughs> he's a really nice guy. I mean, he was, you know, I, I'm the oldest in my family and he's the youngest in his. 
he has an older brother and I have all sorts of brothers and a sister. So, um, you know, it was just, it was really nice being able to talk with him and he's just, you know, really down to earth. Sure. No, I had the, I had the pleasure when I first met you guys, I didn't have a chance to talk to you because you were overwhelmed with fans and Tony was, you know, he was, he was getting a, a lot of attention too, but I caught him in a moment where I was actually just able to have a one-on-one with him and I felt the same thing. This guy is just so down to earth. He's so proud of his his son. We were talking about his firefighter son and how how proud he makes him. And it was just it was a really uh, warm, down to earth, straightforward conversation. Something you would have with a friend rather than you know a major celebrity, which again is the case. Um, well, yep, he was just a really a good guy, and you know he he knew what he wanted and. Uh, you know, he directed a lot of the new Leave It to Beavers, or not a lot, but some of them. Right. And it was really fun working with him to see, you know, this person that I'd grown up with. And now all of a sudden he's out there and he's being a director. He was an artist. He had he did some great uh, uh, still lives and all sorts of things. And he was just a really nice guy. Yeah. That's kind of why you guys were two birds of a feather. Um, I felt that immediately. In meeting both of you, even though we didn't have deep conversations, I was like, these guys, these legendary guys are so down to earth. I wonder if someday in the future <laughs> I could call them friend. Anytime you want. I, I appreciate that. And I know that there was an event, and I, I just saw this because I'm going to be interviewing some of the folks that were doing it with you at the Hollywood Museum, the Hollywood Museum Squares which, of yeah. course, was a parody, in a sense, of the Hollywood Squares. Right. And so, first of all, I've got to get to that museum. I haven't been yet, and I'm just feeling really stupid for not doing that when I was down there. <laughs> it would have been a good opportunity. But um, was that a fun experience with, with all those uh, peers of yours that were appearing at on the... Yeah, it's it's a really fun place. I mean, you see all these things that... You know, even I, who work in the industry, never really even thought about there's, you know, things that you see on a show and you think, I wonder why that's there. And you see it there and it's the real thing. And, you know, the people are people that, you know, and then the exhibits are great. Yeah. Kicking myself because I was right there. There's always next time. Exactly right. Well, I wanted to talk a bit about how wonderful your wife is. Which one? Okay, so we'll move on. Uh, what I would like to talk to you about is... <laughs> oh, look, the great thing is, is that I've had the honor and pleasure of working with both of you on a limited scale, which was um, for the development of Jerry's merchandise site. Yeah. And, you know, I, I learned the talent of your wife at that time because she helped me basically write that entire thing. And if she hadn't, it probably would not have been even half as good. So I know she does come in handy every once in a while. <laughs> so with that, as far as the fact that it is uh, the holidays, the holidays are upon us. And we want to drive home the fact that that merchandise is awesome. I can say that not from speculation. I can tell you from personal experience that I love my beaver hat. And, of course, it was green. Who would have thought? Well, that was kind of interesting because when I wore it, I think it wasn't the first show, but it may have been the second. Um, it was a kind of a, a little hazy, rainy day, and my mom didn't want my hair to get all wet. And so she was digging through the closet and just found this hat and brought it. And when we got to the studio, the wardrobe man, and they, you know, I put on my stuff and they put on the makeup and the director came in and said, I like the hat, leave it on him. Okay. So that's how the hat came about just by chance. And rumor has it, you still have it. I absolutely do. Wow. Um, you know, it's, and it's just, it's basically a, a green hat. Now I've looked at times in different places and it's very seldom that you'll see a green hat there's blue there's you know all sorts of different colors but not many greens right well so when's it going to end up at the hollywood museum or the smithsonian or stay right where it belongs well i don't know you know i i would if people are interested in it i wouldn't mind sharing it with them because 
you know, there's not a lot I do. It's not like I wear it every day to, you know, to go to work or to go outside. So, <laughs> it's just, Well, that would be the question. Does it still fit? Yeah, because your head, people don't realize this, but I think it's three, but it may be two. Your head has almost got its full size by that time. That's why a lot of kids look so, you know, out of touch because they're walking around with a head that's not really – um, you know, what you would think should be with their body. Exactly. But yeah, I've had that. And my mom does not know where she got it. She, the day that uh, I was like the first or second day we were shooting the Leave it to Beaver um, and it started to rain. And at the studio, it's a long walk from where they let us park to where you actually, you know, film the show. And so she just grabbed this hat that she found in a closet. So she doesn't know where it came from who had it, why it was there, but it became mine. And, you know, kind of everybody loved it, so we just kept it in. Yeah, I say you keep it at home. <laughs> that's what I do. <laughs> I mean, that's it's sentimental for multiple reasons, obviously. Um, but, yeah, you're right. Green is so unique. That's why I have 10 hats, and it's usually the first one I'll grab just because the, the color strikes me. It's like, that's yeah, cool. Green absolutely. goes with everything. It does. <laughs> Who would have thought? Well, with this merchandise, you have combinations with uh, autographed baseball. Hats. Hats, baseball caps. A lot of, a lot of pictures. Yeah. Of me and one with you, Beaumont, me uh, hitting a baseball and, and then a, a T-shirt with uh, my uh, actual picture on it. And I also autograph those. Great stuff. How do I know? I'm the spokesperson. <laughs> You're doing a wonderful job. Thank you. <laughs> well, thanks. And of course, in the outro, I will put in and in the description links to how to find everything online. Sounds good. And um, yes, it's awesome, Jerry, that you're out hitting the circuit again, at least that everybody's healthy enough to start doing these fan events. You know, is is that something you're looking at 2023? Holy smokes. Probably, yeah. You know, but it's just nice really to see the fans. I mean, you know, when you're working on a show, you're there with the crew and they're like family, but there's just so many people that like it. And then they come up to you and they say, oh, I really, yeah, and that happened to me or that my brother did that or my uncle did that. And it's just really fun to have people that, you know, like the show and watch it. And a lot of times they know more about it than I do. <laughs> well, you know, when you're doing it, you don't have to know more about it because you are it. But I, I guess it was a, this past event was a very um, enlightening experience for your co-stars. Some of them were surprised. Yeah, I think I don't think they really realized how many people we get because a lot of them had done the show here in Hollywood um, because obviously they didn't have to buy tickets and all that kind of stuff. And here it's you know there's not a lot of people that actually come. Because it's, you know, it's, they're there every, I guess it's every three months or something, they, they do it. So it was a lot of fun. Uh, Luke and Pamela, that was their first time. And it was just, you know, really fun to see them. They didn't realize how many people, you know, really liked them on the show and were willing to, you know, stand behind it by giving them money just to sign their name and say, you know, thank you very much for being on the show. Yeah, that's beautiful. It, uh, a self-esteem builder, and that's uh, you know that's where it's at. I love that. Yeah, and it's really nice because we're very, very you know cognitive of our fans, and you know we have to you have to know what you know how to handle them because everybody wants something. They want to. You know, Could you just write this ten more times? Uh, no, because there's a line. You know, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yes, let's talk about your past. We'll start yeah. from the day you were born. Yeah. It was an early day in Iowa. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, that would be kind of tough. Yeah. Well, you know, they're all nice people, though. That's the thing. And you know that they know that this is probably going to be the only chance they ever get. So I, I have great, not I guess it would be sympathy for them. I don't, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to start screaming at them, why are you talking to me? I'm busy. But, you know, <laughs> they know that. If they don't get in that one question, why is this that or that this, um, which usually I don't have an answer for, I don't know is my usual answer. <laughs> you know, why did the door open that way? I don't know. 
<laughs> but but you do know why the hat still fits. So maybe you should just yes. go with that. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I have a very big head. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, figuratively speaking, certainly not in any other way. Um, the man I've come to know is very down to earth and and wonderful to the fans. I've seen it firsthand. Um, and so, and with me as well. So it's, it's so appreciated, buddy. So appreciated. You know, it's just so easy. I don't understand why everybody can't do it. I see some of these other people. I just go, I just don't understand. It's just, why would you want to treat somebody that's coming up to say how good you are and treat them like that? Yeah. Does that happen often in front of you at fan events or anything like that? It does, you know, that they, because, you know, a lot of the, they want something more. They want, oh, could you put it to me and my sister? Or did, I don't know. But you know, it's just, it's different. And you, you, when you're signing autographs for like four or five hours, you're not probably in the best of moods by the fourth hour. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Well, I, I've had the experience when I was, when I was in this, on the soap opera briefly, but we were a band to on the show. So we would go out and do fan events and I got to sign autographs. And okay. the thing that I came, I feel the same way or felt, <laughs> not, that's past tense folks. <laughs> I felt the same as you, whereas these people are here and they're, they're wanting to connect. Yeah, and they're, they're very nice people. They've spent money to come out just to see you. They've stood in line, and, you know, it's so easy to be nice to them, and then they're just so grateful. Absolutely. You know, I couldn't stand it while sitting at the table. I couldn't stand seeing this huge line and not making them feel like they're waiting for something good. So I got up and walked out and, and shook hands with everybody prior to them getting to the table because— and and boy, what a difference that made! <laughs> Plus, yeah, that's, that's a great thing. Yeah, oh, it was really neat. Something I'll never forget. That that ten years was awesome. But um, Jerry, you're a you're a, like you say you're going to be out again in 2023 doing fan events, and how exciting is that? I can't wait. I can't wait because I love meeting the fans. And- answering all the questions that they've i don't know how long they've had them but um you know and they say is that the real answer well i'm not going to give you the wrong answer <laughs> i'm not going to tell you <laughs> but they're just they're just nice people and you know it's it's fun it really is absolutely uh, well i could see that i could see you having fun and Teresa was having fun too she said i have to say something nice about her now okay very, she's a very good wife yes yes she is and very creative, I might add. I'll add to that. And very smart. Okay, let's go back and forth here. Um, Wait a minute. You don't know. You're sitting there. I'm getting the looks. You can see the looks I'm getting. Oh, I'm I'm having a ball with this. She is quite beautiful, too, I might add. That, that I would agree with. Okay. Okay. Your turn. <laughs> I don't know what I would do without her because I know I wouldn't be going to all these autograph shows and all the different things I do because... Guess who really manages most of that stuff? Some of us skip through life and others do all the work and the social media. Well, a labor of love, let's face it. Absolutely. And yeah, you guys are you guys are awesome together. I like I said, I got to experience it firsthand and just what a wonderful couple. Thank you very much. We do have a good time. That's awesome. Well, you guys know I love you both and um I know you're a little under the weather with all that traveling, your jet setting lifestyle. Um, I'm going to let you get back to your day. And I want to thank you for joining me. Well, thank you for letting me be on. There you have it. Another retro TV trivia in the books. Be sure to check out JerryMathersBeaverMerch.com and look through all his neato stuff. And click on the Appearances tab to keep up with Jerry and his various upcoming fan events. If you haven't already, please subscribe to this podcast and leave me a positive rating and review. You'll also see links to all my social media accounts, and I would, of course, appreciate your follows there. I'm your host, Pat McCormick, and thanks for listening to Retro TV Trivia. <laughs>